So people are always surprised to hear that I went from broke, working in the music industry, to becoming a self-taught programmer all in less than two years time. It wasn't until my story got featured on nocsdegree.com that I really started to see that people were resonating so much with the story. Honestly, I'm here to tell you that coding boot camps and CS degrees, from my experience, are really largely unnecessary. You can make the switch self-taught to a coding job on your own just by way of discipline, persistence, and some free and cheap online resources. So in this video, we're gonna talk about my journey, how I went from zero to hero. So the story starts out with me graduating from college and moving to Los Angeles to pursue a career in the music industry, where I worked at a talent agency for about two years. And obviously in the early spring of 2020, the pandemic hit, so we were forced to all go remote. I was working specifically in music touring. We were helping to book artists around the world to play concerts. The touring industry took a hit. So a few months later, most of the department that I was working in, including myself, were furloughed and basically laid off. So at this time, I am freshly unemployed and I had a lot of time to ponder. I had come from a toxic work environment that had a lack of a work-life balance, super low pay, not the best benefits. I always felt like I had to put on a face. And worst of all, I felt like I was always compromising my own creativity by representing someone else's. So I knew that it was time to get practical. It's summer of 2020 and I start doing some career research on Reddit and YouTube and a bunch of different sites. And I'm seeing that a lot of people from unconventional backgrounds, just like me, were switching into the tech industry, more specifically into coding jobs. And what I realized is that the barrier to entry seemed low. So you didn't need like a degree or some shiny certificate validating that you could code for a living for a great company. I saw that there were kind of like three routes to take to become a programmer, CS degree, coding bootcamp, self-taught route. I almost immediately eliminated the first two options because I didn't want to sink any more of my money and any more of my time into something that I felt like I could just do myself. Honestly, I trusted the fact that it would probably just take discipline and structure and persistence for me to be able to just teach myself using free and cheap online resources. I knew that the resources were already out there on the internet. I had to just get a hold of them, which seemed fairly easy. So what did I start to do? I began teaching myself how to code. I actually learned about Free Code Camp really early on. So I started on freecodecamp.com. So I ended up going through their general web dev track, which covered HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. When I tell you that I did not know a lick of code, I did not know an iota of code, I could barely even close out P tags. I didn't even know what that was. I didn't know what HTML was or anything. Nonetheless, I persisted through, I kept pushing, and ended up actually finishing out the web dev track on freecodecamp.com in like roughly three to four weeks. And I really liked it. After I finished that, I ended up actually switching over to a couple of courses on Udemy. Those courses were a little bit more comprehensive with web development. They jumped a little bit further into JavaScript. At this time, I was living off unemployment, baby. I was taking the time to learn how to code and basically my schedule looked like this every day. I would get up, start coding, take a break, code again, take a lunch break, code for the rest of the day and be done. And that was kind of my everyday routine. One one of the things that I used during this time to keep me structured was the Pomodoro technique. If you don't know what this is, I would definitely look it up. It's a great way to keep track of your progress and it's super satisfying to see your progress as you write the progress down. Pomodoro technique is the way to go. I still use it today. So after I finished up a couple of those courses on Udemy, it was about six months into my journey. And at this time, I felt like I was ready to finally start to get some semblance of real world experience. I didn't really know where to start. So I ended up just reaching out to family and friends for anyone who would let me just build them a website or help them with a free web consultation of some sort, just anything to start getting my feet wet and get my foot in the door. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I figured that I would just figure it out as I went. After a little while, I started to get some paid gigs, like 20 bucks here and there, 30 bucks, 50 bucks for a 
web redesign. And keep in mind, this was more than I was getting paid in the music industry. So I was pretty happy and it was all remote work, even if it was like freelance and little one-off gigs. I got some more consistent freelance work, which was really nice for me. And at this point, about a year had gone by and I saw that my unemployment funding was beginning to run out and I knew that I needed something a little bit more reliable. So I started applying to jobs. I went on LinkedIn and Indeed and I started blasting out my resume to as many people that would take me. One of the first companies that I applied to ended up actually getting back to me and asked me to interview like the next day. Web dev job, $20 an hour, one hour commute there, one hour commute back two hours total commute time, no benefits. That's right. You already know what I did. I accepted it out of desperation and panic. I'm not going to go into too much detail about my experience at this company, but it was brief. I was there for under six months. I learned a lot, but ultimately things just didn't end up working out. So I ended up parting ways with them after just under six months. So I fall flat on my face again, just about a year after I began this whole entire journey, wondering if this was really going to actually work out for me. I'm unemployed, I'm panicked, and I need a job ASAP or else I'm living on the streets. Soon after I left, magically, a recruiter on LinkedIn hits me up for a web-based position. It's at a corporate company, fully remote, and it pays one and a half times the pay of my last role. So I'm just thinking to myself like, whoa, this is way too good to be true. So I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's interview. Let's do this. So I start interviewing. After three rounds of interviewing, I could tell that this was an amazing company with an awesome culture. And I end up getting the offer and I am absolutely ecstatic. I am elated. I'm so happy because this was livable pay, a great culture, totally remote, big step up of where I was before. And best of all, no more two hour commute every single day that was driving me nuts. I was exhausted by that. I had never experienced this type of a job, this good of a job. And after about a year and a half of all this hard work, I was finally starting to see things come full circle for me. And that's the crazy thing about success is that sometimes success and failure lie so close to each other. So that's why you have to always just keep persisting. And this reminds me of David McElroy's allegory of the diamond mine. You never know when success and luck is going to strike. That's why you just have to keep going. Persistence always triumphs over talent every single time. And I felt like there were so many times when this career path just wasn't going to work out, but I kept on pushing anyways, because honestly, I knew that I would hit the diamond mine at some point. And at this point in the story, I had just begun to chip at the diamond mine and I was feeling good. All right, so about six months into this new job, I'm super happy. And what do you know? I end up getting a message again from another recruiter on LinkedIn. If it's not obvious already, keep your LinkedIn updated because you never know who is in search of your skill set. Anyways, the company that reaches out is an amazing software startup with a great product, a great culture, great benefits, fully remote, great people, great everything. I was really excited to interview and I was like, let's go, let's do this. All right, so I end up interviewing five rounds, technical screening and all. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty nerve wracking, but I kept my composure and I stayed positive throughout. Then it happened. After the last interview, I end up getting a call that I got the job. The offer is in my hand the next day. I'm floored. I can't believe it. I'm so ecstatic. This is something that I had worked like two years for to finally be at a real software startup in a really cool engineering role and writing code for a living. I finally did it. In two years, I dug myself out of proverbial career hell and made it out onto the other side. And I think that the main theme of all of this is that persistence triumphs over talent every single time. Persistence triumphs over talent. Honestly, I'd written that on a sticky note throughout my whole entire process and I would look up at it every single day just to remind me. So my message to you is this, if you're going, keep going because you never know when you're gonna hit the diamond mine. Maybe it's that next job application that you send out or that next connection that you make on LinkedIn or that new person that you recently met at a meetup. Anyways, thank you so much for stopping by today and thanks for listening to my story. I hope that you resonated with it. If you like this content, feel inspired by it, go ahead and like this video. Let's push it out to more people and make sure to subscribe for more content. And as always, feel free to leave me a comment. I love interacting with the community. Until next time, peace.